Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 614. Metformin is a miracle drug for aging and obese patients. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Um, one of my patients uh, came to me and, and uh, said she needed to take metformin. I had given it to her at her last visit because she had signs of prediabetes. And I had told her what it does and that it should help her not develop diabetes in the future. But she had heard things from family members or people who hadn't taken it appropriately or uh, maybe even people, there's a small percentage of people that metformin doesn't work for. And she was, she just didn't take it. But then she wanted to know why her numbers were worse for her lipids and her blood sugar and her hemoglobin A1C, all the signs that you're moving closer and closer from just insulin resistance to diabetes. And Part of that was she didn't take her metformin. The other part was she didn't start to exercise. The other part was she didn't eat a low-carb diet. So all of the things that I had told her, she had not um, taken into her um, lifestyle and decided not to do any of those things, but still wanted results. Well, that's one scenario that I can, I can have several of those same scenarios in a few weeks. Um, then I was asking, uh, I was consulting another patient who asked me why I was giving her a dangerous drug. She had heard some, something online, which I honestly think that all they're doing online is scaring you so that you'll buy a certain product. So when you hear what drug is going to kill you, I mean, honestly, they go back in and they usually step back from their allegation that this drug is going to kill people because certainly metformin doesn't do that. It saves people's lives and lengthens your healthy life. But it's one of the uh, drugs that, that bloggers and people on, uh, on the internet have, have used to just scare you into taking a product, a supplement usually. So please don't listen to those. Those are really not based on anything except fantasy. So, um, while I was having these, I was seeing these in my email box, in my inbox, I was talking to patients who said they read something about that and it was dangerous and I, they won't take it. Really, I'm a doctor. I'm not going to give you something that is dangerous and is co going to cause you harm or is going to not do the job that I tell you it's going to do, which is lose weight, normalize your blood sugar, normalize your insulin resistance, make your body work more effectively. Those are the things it does but I'm not gonna put you on something that I tell you, those are the things that this drug does and not give you the drug that does it, that, that makes no sense. Let me, let me just state that, that this medication's been around since before I was in medical school, which is a very long time in Europe. And like the 19, I think, believe it was the 1930s. And it didn't get approved in the US until 1994, which is when I was early in practice. And um, when I first was introduced to this medication, I was a gynecologist and an obstetrician, and my main focus was gynecology and patients who couldn't get pregnant. And many times the patients couldn't get pregnant because of um, having polycystic ovaries. Well, polycystic ovaries is really just a name. It doesn't mean your ovaries are all full of cysts. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. But it is uh, an inability to actually pop an egg out through, through your ovary to actually be able to fertilize it and get pregnant. So in the early 90s, they found and were doing studies on the fact that metformin, a drug strictly for diabetes, could actually be prescribed to women who wanted to get pregnant and who had polycystic ovaries 
and uh, were not ovulating on the other drugs for um, polycystic ovaries like Clomid. So I entered a study, uh, and I entered my patients in a study um, for uh, Dr. Um, Kilo, and he was a guy in St. Louis who was a diabetologist, but he was doing a study on how effective metformin was for treating and normalizing young women with polycystic ovaries who were trying to get pregnant. And my patients, I had a huge year of delivering babies, and I had a huge year of people who had polycystic ovaries getting pregnant. And, I, and honestly, I had the biggest group of patients in Dr. Kilo's study. They were so happy. It was unbelievable. Then their friends came and other friends came because they knew that I would use this medication off-label to help them get pregnant if that was what they were told was their problem. So I have a really good history with metformin from the very get-go. And then when I started um, taking care of patients in terms of um, anti-aging, keeping people better, keeping people healthier throughout their lifetime, I started looking at the many articles I would get um, in the many journals that I read every week about metformin and the different things that it does. Now, frankly, the FDA hasn't approved metformin since 1994 for all these other things that we have medical studies that shows it does effectively and it does uh, in a, and it is not expensive, so it does very, um, very well for people who don't want to spend money on infertility drugs or uh, expensive diabetic drugs. So I really, I really liked it because I wasn't sending people to get their drugs and having them spend, you know, their entire paycheck on it. It was, it's very inexpensive. But here are the things that metformin can do for people, especially people who are starting to age over 40. It reduces your risk of cancer, all cancers, and they have lots of studies on that. It causes weight loss, now that you have to also eat a low-carb diet. Those people who fail that are not eating a low-carb diet, or they're, they're in that percentage of very few people who don't respond to metformin. It's, it's, it's almost negligible. Um, it lowers your triglycerides, which means it lowers your risk of heart disease. It treats insulin resistance, which means that you can use the blood sugar for energy. So that helps fatigue, and it also helps uh, fat loss. Um, we treat prediabetes with it so people don't get diabetes. We treat mood disorders. That was the most, the latest revelation is that many mood disorders have to do with um, a, an abnormal metabolism. And so people have depression, anxiety, psychoses because of a medical um, metabolic disorder. And so oftentimes, Psycho psychiatrists are starting to recommend metformin for this particular reason, and it's working. It also works, as I said, for infertility and polycystic ovaries. It decreases the symptoms of aging. So, so all in all, it makes people live longer, and they've done studies on that. So taking metformin is a way to prolong your healthy part of your life. Um, the stat is that people who are taking metformin have a lower mortality rate, which I think kind of says it all. But it doesn't just make you live longer and miserable. It makes you thinner, healthier, more energetic. I mean, it basically helps you not get diabetes if you take it early enough. Um, many people take di metformin with other diabetic drugs if they have severe type 2 diabetes, and that's... Uh, perfectly fine. Other diabetic drugs don't always help insulin resistance, so it works with the other diabetic drugs to make it more effective. But how does it work? Um, metformin works by lowering the blood sugar, but it, off, it hardly ever, excuse me, hardly ever lowers it too much so you get hypoglycemic. So it lowers blood sugar enough but not to a critical level, so that makes it safe. Um, it decreases the blood sugar production in the liver. And that's one of the ways that we, we um, are insulin resistant. We, we have a lot of saved blood sugar in the liver. And then when we don't eat, like if we're fasting, our liver dumps all that sugar that was being held to save our lives, basically. Your body feels like it's starving, so it dumps sugar from your liver to keep your blood sugar normal. 
So it decreases that. It doesn't stop it, but it decreases that because over time, if you eat too many carbs throughout your life, you're going to have way too much sugar dumped from your liver into your, into your bloodstream. And then you will get hyper hyperglycemia, then hypoglycemia right after, which makes you exhausted. Um, so it helps with that. It increases the receptors cells. So all the cells are receptors of insulin and, and blood sugar. Insulin carries blood sugar into a cell. And I've gone over this in, in the past, but if you have had a high sugar diet, and you become insulin resistant, it's your body trying to save you from yourself because you are, your insulin carries your blood sugar into the cell. If too much blood sugar is going into the cell, then your cells will die. So it's, insulin resistance is a response to a bad eating, basically, and bad genetics, probably. So those two things are helped with metformin. Uh, and um, the last known um, way that metformin works is that it decreases your hunger and it decreases your need for calories. So you don't feel as hungry, you feel full. It also takes some of the sugar out of your meal and dumps it into your intestines so that you don't, you don't actually absorb it all. So these are the ways it works. All of those ways are positive. Um, when I find a patient who has signs of prediabetes or diabetes, um, like a high hemoglobin A1C, a high fasting blood sugar, a high triglyceride, um, or a, a high insulin level, which is in my book over 10, not over 27 or whatever they have on the lab sheet. Um, I prescribe metformin for them to make them more insulin sensitive and I give them a diet and I give them exercise to do. Maybe other medications, if they've got a low thyroid, I'll treat that. If I always treat low testosterone and low estrogen um, in women and low testosterone in men. So all of those things contribute to bringing a patient into health from not being healthy. But if you think about it, the reason they're, he they're in this situation is because they thought they were getting away with eating all this stuff. Too much at a meal, too many carbs at a meal, junk food, sodas, sugar, and, and all kinds of things. Yeah, you may have thought you were getting away with it because you didn't get fat, but at some point, that'll happen. And then you're not getting away with it anymore, and it's causing trouble with your entire body. So it's, it would be better if everybody just ate properly and didn't have to go through this when they got to a certain age. But, but I'll take anybody from whatever stage they're in and see if I can reverse the whole process. I also use um, metformin as a medication with a weight loss program. So it's one of the medications I use, usually the first one, because it's inexpensive, it's easy to take. You take it with your biggest meal of the day, and I only prescribe extended release metformin. The short acting has a lot of side effects, and the short acting is really just to cover your meal and keep your blood sugar down for that meal. And then at the next meal, you take another one. At the last meal of the day, you take another one. So basically, that's what the short acting is for. The extended release is 24 hours, and it's going to your cells and, and basically protects you from too much sugar, and it, keeps, and it actually helps the insulin bring the sugar into the cell. So that is very, very important because you need to have sugar in your cells to make energy. So that's why insulin is so important. That's why metformin is so important because it helps your body do that when it's, uh, it's way off course. Um, so what do I use metformin for? Because that's, I mean, I use it for many things. Weight loss is the first one. I also use it for patients who have something called um, non-alcoholic fatty liver. That generally means that you're storing a lot of fat in your liver and it's damaging it. So your liver enzymes are elevated. Usually we diagnose it by the elevated liver enzymes, uh, insulin resistance on your labs, and then send you for an ultrasound or a CAT scan of your liver to see if it's really fatty. And then we follow these, these tests to watch it get better if we can. And the primary drug that is used to make this get better is metformin. It works. So many of my patients have fatty liver and they have high triglycerides and they have 
prediabetes. And so one drug is taking care of all of that. And they, I don't know why, but oftentimes their, do, their other doctors are confused as why, how they got better. But in general, it's, it's a big change in lifestyle. It's replacing hormones when they're needed, and then it's metformin. Now, you heard me say high triglycerides. Those are the, those are the fats in your blood, but they're not cholesterol. They're from carbohydrates. So cl eating too many carbohydrates, having um, diabetes, having fatty liver will increase your triglycerides. Triglycerides aren't good for your heart. Triglycerides deposit throughout your arteries. And so having a high level of triglycerides is, is not healthy. Um, it's probably more directly related to heart disease than cholesterol is. So triglycerides are something that you need to work on. That's aerobic exercise, meaning not weightlifting, but aerobic exercise, and eating low-carb, high-protein, and some fats in your food, eating well and eating several times a day. Um, but basically cutting out anything made with flour or any grain or any sugar, and definitely no sodas. Sodas are the worst. So, um, so that's, we can manage high triglycerides with metformin. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard this phrase, but um, my patients who have had cancer say cancer loves sugar, and it does. Cancer loves to grow in a high sugar environment. It's one of the things, if you're afraid of cancer and you have it in your family, it's one of those things that you can literally change. You don't have to eat high carb meals. You don't have to eat sugary meals. You don't have to eat donuts. You don't, none of those things are essential to your diet, and none of those things are going to help you. And if you're truly worried about cancer, that would be the first thing I'd cut out. But many of my patients are past just cutting it out, and they've had cancer, and uh, they don't want to get it back, and they know that sugar is a bad thing to have in your bloodstream at a high level. So, so we treat them with metformin, and we treat them with diet, exercise, hormones, try to make them as normal as possible and try to get their immune system kicked in with supplements so that they can fight a cancer cell if, it, and, if and when it does change from a normal cell into a cancer cell and your body can kill it. So that's what we're looking for is to try, try to decrease, decrease cancer. These are all things that bother you as you get older. Um, another thing that metformin does well is... A prolactin level is a level that you uh, of hormone that you make from your pituitary, and it was meant to be high in pregnancy and in nursing, and that's all. But some some of the drugs that we use in psychiatry, especially the antipsychotics, cause prolactin to elevate. So, one of the tricks of the psychiatrist is to put people on metformin to keep the prolactin down. The reason you want prolactin down is because it causes stimulation and pain to women and men's breast tissue. And that isn't good really for anybody. So prolactin is something we want to keep minimized, and metformin helps us do that. Um, one of the, one of the uh, most recent ads, actually last month in 2022, was by Psychiatry Today, and they showed statistics that showed that metformin can be helpful in mood disorders. It, um, it actually helped people on antipsychotics lose weight, and uh, it helped repair the brain. So if the brain was, sometimes your brain is re, um, rewired because of an illness or because of an addiction, and honestly, you need to kind of go back and rewire it in a normal way. And so metformin is one of the things that helps the brain rewire itself. It's really kind of amazing. Um, it imp improves motivation, cognition, your ability to think, and it increases dopamine, so it makes you have that pleasure sense when you should, instead of saying, oh, is this all there is? Um, this is something the psychiatrists are now using. It, count it also, one last thing, my biggest beef about um, people talking about risk for heart disease is that they don't talk about inflammation. A lot of people have inflammation throughout their bodies every day, and that is not good for developing heart disease. I mean, it, 
increases your atherosclerosis um, thickness in your arteries. So metformin also decreases inflammation, which is a, a huge boon, and it, and it decreases osteoporosis, degenerative brain disease, and frailty. So all of those things are things that metformin can do, and they may be things that you have or you need metformin for, and you can suggest this to, uh, to your doctor or have them watch this. I'm sure your doctor knows most of this. But I, I want to have a couple words about how I prescribe metformin, and that is when I'm talking to a patient, I say, this is an inexpensive, easy-to-take medication, but you've got to take it with food. You can't take it before bed. You can't take it really with breakfast. You don't, most people don't eat enough. So um, take it with your largest meal, and you start with one metformin extra strength or extended release, that's ER or XR, and you t take one with dinner every night for a week, and it may cause some, some eh, your stomach may not feel that great, and you can't eat a high-carb diet with it. If you're going to have a birthday, say once a year, and you're going to eat something that's really high-carb, don't take it because it's going to give you diarrhea. It punishes you for eating the wrong thing. But we all have stuff like that once in a while, and I'm not talking about every day, but you shouldn't take it if you're going to have a high-carb meal like birthday cake. So the long-acting form helps you lose weight throughout the day, helps manage your, um, your imbalance of your metabolism all the time, not just at meals, but it also helps at the meal to just get rid of some of the calories into your intestines before it goes through your liver and, gets, uh, and it gets absorbed as uh, something that is a blood sugar, a blood sugar element, meaning it would make you have higher blood sugar. So it gets rid of some of that. So it's not, your meal isn't quite as bad as it could be, although I do advise smaller portions and I do advise low carb meals. Um, one of the things that my patients will do is they won't listen to me about what to eat with it. And then they'll come in and say, I just can't take that. Well, that's because they still want to drink soda and they still want to eat uh, cake and cookies and all kinds of junk every day, and that does not work. So um, if you really want to get better, if you really want to be healthy the rest of your life, it takes some sacrifice. And sacrificing things that you've become accustomed to and replacing them with good food, healthy food, that does not cause you to have high blood sugars or high insulin levels is really what you need to do. And if you don't want to do that, then I guess it may be that you're just giving up. And I don't advise that for anyone, but you should put your heart into it if you really want to change. You should really decide and consider how you're going to change how you eat, how, how you exercise, and how you take your medications. There are a few things at the very end I just want to say, and that is that they've done some studies on certain ethnic groups, such as the uh, Polynesian Filipino group, and they found that they are less likely to respond to metformin than other groups of people. So I, I'm just throwing that out there in case you uh, have that in your genetic history and you're taking metformin but it's not doing what I'm telling you it should do, then you, there are other pre-diabetic or diabetic drugs that you can use. Uh, they're called GLP-1 inhibitors. They're just more expensive but they will work for you, even if metformin does not. So I hope that this explains how this drug works, why we write it, why we ask uh, patients to take it, because we really want you to be, be better. We want to give you a break so that you can change your lifestyle and, and uh, lose weight and feel better and actually extend your life. So if you want to extend your life, this is a really good way to do it. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.